To the UK now, where the nation has officially begun making their way to the polls, with the opposition Labor Party the heavy favourite to gain power and end 14 years of Conservative rule. It's the first time since 2019 that the nation will have their say. Since then, the nation faced a pandemic and, of course, now the war in Ukraine, but also the death of Queen Elizabeth II. And the political landscape could not be more drastically different. For more, let's bring in editor for Spiked Online, Tom Slater, live from London. Tom, great to have you on. Thank you so much for joining me. As I said, 14 years of the Tories looking likely to be coming to an end. Is there any chance of turning this around at the 11th hour? Not if the polls are even slightly accurate. I mean, we political journalists are sometimes given to being a bit overdramatic, but currently the most optimistic scenario for them is that they're going to get about 150 seats. That would be their worst ever result in the modern era. Some of these polls are suggesting they could go low as 60, 70 seats, which would mean they would be in a fight for third place with the Liberal Democrats. It's not an exaggeration, I think, if, with that caveat, that if the polls are correct, that the Tory party could be facing being shut out of power for a generation. And they only really have themselves to blame if you look at not just how this campaign has gone, but how the past 14 years have gone as well, I dare say. Well, where did it all go wrong, particularly now for Rishi Sunak? He called this snap election, presumably thinking that he had a, a chance, now facing electoral wipeout. What happened, do you think? He had a bad hand going into it. There were 20 points behind in the polls. That hasn't really budged. Um, I think he also had a bad inheritance insofar as the Tories had this great opportunity post-Brexit to carve out this new coalition. They got a lot of Labour voters last time around. They were really picking up seats across the country. And I think they've squandered that, the combination of COVID and Ukraine, not the stuffing out of them, but also they forgot the voters that they were there properly to be serving. And then Rishi Sunak in and of himself, I mean, he's supposedly very good with a spreadsheet, he's a good technocrat, but he's got all the charisma of a breeze block, to be perfectly frank. And he's taken a campaign that was always going to be difficult and made it a laughing stock. He started off calling the election out in the rain for some reason. There was the D-Day snub where he left those World War II commemorations early. It's been one thing after another. And it's really, it's not an exaggeration to say it's been one of the worst run campaigns for a sitting government that certainly I can remember. Well, it looks like Keir Starmer's in the box seat. What would a Labor government mean now for Britain? I think that's such an important question, not least because Keir Starmer is an incredibly slippery character. He's tried not to say very much during this campaign. Historically, he's often said one thing and then said another, depending on what he's who he's talking to. But it's very clear to me that if you're talking about reopening the question of Brexit, if you're talking about more hate speech codes, if you're talking about more net zero zealotry, that's in the DNA of this Labour Party. It is now very much the kind of parliamentary wing of the metropolitan elite. And I think anyone expecting Keir Starmer to be as cautious in government as he has been over this campaign may get a bit of a rude awakening in the days ahead. Nigel Farage's Reform Party uh, had climbed their way up in the polls, particularly over the last month, but they've had a bit of a setback. How do you think that they will fare in the polls? That is one of the big questions going into this. Some of the pollsters at the last minute are starting to suggest that maybe the reform vote has been slightly underestimated. They're seeing a lot of undecideds beginning to break for the Reform Party. So I think the question of how high their vote share overall it will be an interesting one. They're very unlikely to get more than one or a few seats because of just our electoral system and the fact that their vote is quite spread across the country. It's not concentrated in constituencies necessarily. Um, but I think they're looking at, regardless, a, a significant incursion into British electoral politics. And even if that doesn't materialise into many seats in Westminster, it means they will have that more populist voice in Parliament, at least in the form of Nigel Farage, it seems like. We're almost out of time, but when will the first seats be announced in the UK? Do you think it'll start happening quite quickly? Yeah, essentially from 10 o'clock onwards, we're, um, we've got the exit poll and then there'll be some seats in the North East, which are always kind of rushing to declare first so they can get their moment in the spotlight. That would be very much the kind of bellwether for where things are going. But yes, they'll be rolling in pretty soon after that and throughout the night. All right. Well, we've actually got some live pictures on our screen of some of the polling booths there as they are uh, getting ready for what I'm sure will be a very busy day ahead. That's live in London at the moment. Tom, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Really appreciate it.